Okay, this is Experiment 5, non-classical record player experiment, brought to you by Stefan Carr, Jennifer Link, and Patrick Arnott. Brian Wayne Rodder, too. We're going to go through the different shots of our apparatus. This here is the above shot. It'll be a still camera, not rotating with the frame. We have here the rotating reference camera. This one will be rotating with the apparatus and will allow us to see the development of the waves. We also have a camera that will show us the level view. However, because we are dealing with a non-transparent metal pan, we will not be using this camera. So this shows a record player. And this is the old classical experiment that was done. You would rotate uh, using a record player to see this experiment. Now we're going to be using a modern apparatus to rotate the whole record player. <laughs> So now Stefan is spinning it up to about how many RPM? About seven rounds per minute for or seven RPM for the, the startup. And we're going to go back to the top measurement. This is the top view that stays with the fluid. You can see the cup in the center. The cup in the center has nothing in it yet. We're going to eventually begin to fill it up with something cold. OK, you want to add the dye. So now we're going to go and add in the dye. So this is a fluorescing dye that is going to be adding. And we have some black lights that are used to look at it with. So the dye's purpose is to show where the fluid is circulating. That looks very good. OK, so what do you want to do? Shall we turn off the lights and then watch with the black lights and see how this looks? That sounds like a good idea. Let's go ahead and turn off the lights. Again, we have three black lights surrounding the uh, apparatus. And you can see the fluorescing dye. It looks really quite interesting. And underneath, you can see the reflection of the UV light fluorescing off of the record player as well. That's the red color that you see. But you can see some uh, formation of waves. Yes, you can, especially off to the left side. You can see, you can see some great uh, wave development, some uh, clockwise rotation, along with a general circulation of the flow going around the apparatus due to the spinning. Once again, this is without the temperature gradient, so this is just the formation from the spinning of the apparatus. Okay, Jennifer, do you want to take an uh, initial photograph with the infrared camera? And so you want to try to get as much above it as you can. You might want to move the ladder in uh, a little bit more appropriately. And then uh, see if we can visualize what's going on with the temperature. She has an infrared camera that will give an idea of what the temperature distribution is on this system at any point. How's it looking with the infrared camera? All the same color. So I guess that means we need to start adding something cold to the center. So what we're going to add is we have some liquid nitrogen that we're going to place into the center to induce the temperature gradient. Uh, we're also going to heat the outer side of the apparatus. Uh, so we will have a hot outer and a very cold inner. So we will heat the outside with what? What kind of apparatus do you think we should use? I think it's a butane lighter. Well, how about a propane torch? Let's use Even our better. soldering torch. Okay.
you never click. Exactly. <laughs> okay, we have the soup ready. So now we're going to add the cold liquid to the center. Let's see what happens. So what's the temperature of the liquid nitrogen? What is the temperature of the liquid nitrogen? Uh, it's about 77 degrees Kelvin. 77 degrees Kelvin. Okay, let's see what happens. So what's the infrared camera doing? <laughs> Once again, we have the infrared camera taking snapshots of what's going on. So the liquid nitrogen is, as would be expected, boiling upon contact and forming the fog that you presently see on the TV screen. And we're getting ice formed in the tank. And ice is forming in the tank. I think, therefore, we must add some heat. So let's go ahead and add some heat to the exterior. We're going to be using our lighter to do that. We're continuing to keep the center cold by pouring more in. And there's our lighter. You can see that by the blue light seen in the TV screen. And you go ahead and go to the overhead view, which will show you. Uh, there's our overhead view. You can see the lighter lighting the exterior as it spins around, as well as the liquid nitrogen in the center. We're frozen I'd up. It's frozen earth. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're not able to see any circulation occur due to the <laughs> surface being completely frozen from the liquid nitrogen from the liquid nitrogen uh, So the liquid nitrogen expanded over the surface, cooling it down as it evaporated, and that caused the surface to freeze. Presently, we are trying to defrost the surface. You can see the lighter trying to work that. I think it's defrosted. And we believe it's defrosted, so we're going back to heating the exterior. The fumes you see are all from the liquid nitrogen, and again, the center is the liquid nitrogen, keeping the center cold. We are not seeing any circulation cells. However, we do have a general flow on the exterior uh, working its way in a counterclockwise rotation with an interior flow working clockwise. So a counterclockwise exterior and a clockwise interior. And you can see some wave action as the uh, some wave action from the interaction of the two different directional flows. You do see some wave formation. If you look along the boundary between the two directional flow, you will see some wave formation. Are we frozen still in the center? Or are we, uh, it does not look like we're frozen. Okay. Maybe we should add some glitter to the top to show the, uh, if there is some fluid motion. So what we can do is we'll go ahead and add uh, some glitter to the surface that will show us a little better on what the circulation patterns are up to. So from the infrared camera, we have just received that uh, the inner temperature is coming in at minus 40. But it's much colder than that. But it's much colder than that. That's just the lower extent of the camera. And again, the camera does represent in Celsius, not Fahrenheit. And the exterior of the apparatus from heating it is coming in at the thermal camera for at what temperature? of the 
uh, of the apparatus, and that ring of ice may end up forming uh, eddies. the North Pole, and that may, as it warms up a little bit. So, of course, the center ring is uh, simulating the North Pole with the cold temperature in the center. Uh, by following the glitter that we just put in, we you can you can make out some wave formation, some counter and clockwise rotations in the flow. We're going to go ahead and add a little bit more glitter. Perhaps that will further show the formations that we're trying to see. Does the glitter show up well? Yeah, it does on the camera. That's great luminescence. Yeah. So your uh, center is now about 25 or 20-ish. Yeah. Okay. Your center's warmed up a lot. Like center's warmed up? So we just received word that the center is warming, as would be expected. We've received that the the center temperature currently sits at approximately 20 degrees temperature Celsius. Uh, with the added glitter, you can make out some cell formations. You can see a general flow pattern around the exterior, as well as a more rapid flow uh, in the boundary layer between the exterior and the interior. Perhaps resemblance of a jet stream between the two different temperature gradients. You can see in the 6 o'clock area of the, di uh, the dish pan a clockwise rotational flow followed by a counterclockwise rotational flow. You can see some stationary cell development illustrated by the glitter working around the cell in both a clockwise and counterclockwise rotation. Again the exterior of the dishpan continues to be warmed with the cold interior. You can see by following a general flow of the glitter that the quickest pattern of flow uh, meanders both from the exterior to the interior of the apparatus. Okay, do you want to add more dye to it too as well? Do you want to add a different color dye or, or maybe a non-fluorescing dye? We're going to go ahead and add more dye to it to further illustrate the contrast of the color differences in the flow. stated just now from the thermal camera is that we still have about a hundred degree temperature difference between the exterior and the interior of the dishpan. And of course now as the dye has been added you can really make out the cell formation illustrated further by the glitter working its way through the flow. You can see some great cells forming all across the dishpan. Uh, both clockwise and counterclockwise, as well as a general flow meandering in between these cells. If you look at the 7 o'clock area, you can see how the flow rides over a clockwise rotational pattern. That is followed by a counterclockwise rotational pattern at about 9 o'clock. You can see some cells as they also work their way around the dishpan, interacting with some stationary cells, such as looking at the 3 o'clock area. You can see some good uh, clockwise rotation. A forming cell at the 12 o'clock area. Great cell that just formed.
almost looked like it was blue there. Blue. So I think that the, the table is tilted that way. The fluid is higher on the side where the glitter is uh, is agglomerating. So we must have a little bit of an internal slosh or something that helps set it up that way. That I think we're good. Okay. One more photograph of the camera. So we're going to go ahead and end this. It seems that we have obtained everything we came looking for. You can see some great circulation pattern, uh, some great cell development, some eddy circulation, interaction between the two different temperature gradients is very prevalent. You can see from the two different colored dye, uh, the flow in the pattern as well as some circulatory systems working through the flow. Perhaps there was a slosh in our system and that's why the glitter seems to have conglomerated in one particular corner, specifically the upper left visible on your screen, whereas the upper right has no glitter at all. So we've now stopped the heating of the exterior and this project seems finalized.